Now, tonight's lesson is going to be on the uh, definite article. And I have chosen this strange order. The normal order of things, if I was trying to just lay this out in a normal fashion, I would have actually introduced nouns tonight and given you the concept of how Hebrew nouns are constructed and their paradigm, masculine and feminine and so forth. But instead, I've elected to take smaller parts to begin with, uh, which we will actually have to come back and review. So we'll start tonight with the definite article. We will move on to the definite article, prepositions and vav conjunctives to explain the difference, that not all vavs are alike. Um, but I've elected to do this tonight, so I've done the same in the same fashion, giving you a small English lesson because, believe it or not, this may uh, make some of you just kind of roll your eyes, but yes, uh, I'm not speaking of the callers that call in from Africa, and there are, we just saw yesterday, and plenty of people calling in from around the world. I'm sure they're enjoying the English lesson. But there are plenty of people right here who, when I mention something like a definite article, and I don't want that to be a moment of shame where you, you say, well, I'm not quite sure what it is. They're simple parts of speech, but for people who grew up speaking a language, even though you may have attended a school where English was the primary language, because you have spoken this language your whole life, you get familiar to the point of maybe forgetting some of the parts of speech that other people will learn and say, oh, well, that, that's easy. So this is not a moment to say, oh boy, do we have to, but it's necessary that we all begin on the same plane. So beginning with, and I've put together, this will be in two parts, I will give you the English portion, and then I will give you the Hebrew portion. There are six pages, I tried to make it short. Uh, it's amazing what you can do with the, a, uh, and an in six pages. <laughs> and this is the condensed version. So. Um, in English, there are three articles that are commonly used. One definite article, the, uh, and indefinite, a, or an, depending on uh, the construction of the sentence and the vowel or consonants before a or an. Now, what I've done here, and I'll read this to you, and then you're free, once we load it on the uh, internet, you're free to download it. An article whether definite or indefinite, helps the reader or communicator to refer to a noun in either a generic or specific way. An indefinite article may refer to something or someone not specifically known or previously mentioned. I give an example. A child was playing. And underneath I list this this way. We don't know the child. We don't know the child's name. It is the first mention of this child in a sentence, but if the thought is further developed about this child, the second time it would be proper and acceptable to use a definite article, the. And I've given you uh, an example sentence. It was a sunny summer morning and a child was playing in the park. The child seemed very content. So in the English language, it's perfectly acceptable to use an indefinite article when we have not mentioned something already. And then the second time we bring it to mention again to use a definite article, we're now referring to something we've previously mentioned. Uh, indefinite, a, can also be used to talk about our profession or position. I'm a pastor, I'm a teacher, I'm a student. I'm in a difficult situation, so it can be used in many ways. This is general stuff most people know, but it's good review for all of us. A, the letter A, when the noun begins with the consonant, so if you were trying to make an indefinite sentence structure, the parts that would fit in, a, your noun begins with a consonant, but an, a n, if the noun begins with a vowel. And that's standard. There are some exceptions, and pronunciation can change this rule depending on where you live in the United States. <laughs> that is added in there as a little, there's a little asterisk there just to make sure everybody says, ah. All right, that gives you the indefinite for English. The definite article, the. And let me just interrupt myself in this to say, I remember when Dr. Scott was teaching on Jeremiah 18, and he referenced G. Campbell Morgan's correction 
of the text, which G. Campbell Morgan said he thought should read other than what the King James presented itself to be, uh, making the correction from uh, the article's perspective. And at the time that I first heard it, it really did not register to me the importance of whether it was indefinite or definite. But then I begin to think about it, and the more I begin to think about it, if it's a definite work, if it's something that is the work, this specific thing that God is doing, then this specific thing pertains to me versus some random work, which could be any work. So um, don't say, well, this is a very nebulous thing, because when it comes down to making the applications, the definite article may be the most important and relevant thing we will uh, learn in the Hebrew Scriptures as pertaining to what God really does enjoy using the word the, believe it or not. I'll get to that in a minute. I'm going ahead of myself. We're still in English now. So the definite article, the, used when referring to someone or something specific. It's also used for proper places and bodies of water. So we say properly in English, the United States of America or the UK, but those are combined bodies. You would not say the Italy or the England. So there are, there are some exceptions, and you have to know them. They're common, commonly uh, taken for granted. And I've given two examples, of course, the stone the builders rejected, to thus, the word of God. Um, sometimes nouns in English, but more commonly, for example, in the Greek language, appear without an article. That uh, anarthris is very common. That means it has no article. Uh, no, no definite or indefinite article, and I've given you two examples. People are kind, God is merciful. No articles, and that happens often. That's your English les lesson pertaining to that. Very brief. The Hebrew. You're going to love this. I love this. Hebrew has no indefinite articles. I love. I mean, there's subtleties about, you know, if 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 indeed. If indeed, Dr. Scott used to make the joke about, you know, the lady who wanted to learn Hebrew so she could talk to God in his own language. Uh, but if indeed this is the language of God's people, I like the fact that God did not use any indefinite articles. Just let that settle for a while. There are no A's or ands. Now, having said that, the absence in Hebrew of a definite article suggests that the noun is indefinite. So you have to play a little detective work. If it is, and I'm going to show you, the, the, the definite article is very easy to identify, at least to begin with. I would like to qualify what I say every once in a while. All right. Unlike English, where we have freestanding articles. The is not attached to anything. A or an is not attached. They're freestanding. In Hebrew, the article must be attached to the noun. It's not independent. It's prefixed. And that, in some strange way, makes life so much easier. If you were having to do this on your own, and it was separate, it would be miserable. So just know the beginning of understanding with this, the Hebrew definite article, it is prefixed to the noun. And let me also say that uh, one of the reasons why I elected to not introduce nouns tonight is I would like, when we begin studying nouns, I'll add back in the definite article so you can see what happens. So initially, we're just looking at the concept. So it's quite easy. Let's see what we're looking at here. We're writing this color. So to recognize the definite article in the Hebrew, at least at first blush, you're looking for something that looks like this. So your hey letter and your vowel underneath, and then the next letter that would stand beside this. Remember, Hebrew is reading in this direction. We have the first letter, and then the next letter. Let's make an imaginary letter here as D. So your next letter has this dagish uh, fort inside of it. So this is the sign. We'll do it again. This is the sign of the definite article 
the equal to the, and it does have the same value as English. So if you were trying to find the definite article, the immediate uh, simple thing is to look for both the vowel and the dot and, of course, the hey. Now, that all sounds nice and easy, and I've given some examples. I'll write them out for you quickly so you can see. For example, uh, the one that I like because it, it will give you the indicator real quickly is you're going to see the dot here. So I've given you the hey. We've got the vowel underneath. We've got the dot that occurs in the next consonant, and we've got mem, I left out a vowel point there, all right, mem. And so here we have the heavens, the heavens. It's a plural, the heavens. In fact, as I was going through this to try and find uh, definite articles that fit this particular example, I was a little bit stumped because, <laughs> you're going to love this, Psalm 91 contains a definite article somewhere, the, but it does not even look like this because it's an exception. Well, yeah, of course. So uh, I actually went to, I opened my Hebrew Bible to Genesis 1-1 and I began looking for anything that would fit the example. So I'm giving you a few examples. Um, so you can see this is exactly what we're looking for in the beginning of understanding what the definite article looks like. We'll give you another one um, here. This, we have the hay again, the vowel underneath. You can see here is my dot, my dagesh fort, and we have vav. Here we have the voice. Now, I would say that many times, you're going to love, I'm going to, I'm going to do something very nice. Many times you will see this. Oh, I love this thing. You can just erase and it's gone. All right. So if you would see simply this noun without the definite article, you would say voice or you would say a voice, but you would not say the voice. And I would also have to remove the dot, by the way. But you would say the voice if you had the hey in front vowel underneath and the dot right there. So that is what it looks like. And I've given you some examples of how to recognize. That is the first straightforward identification of a definite article. Now, remember I made you go through that terrible, arduous task of learning the gutturals. The gutturals, if you remember, were words, uh, letters, for example, alif, resh, and Ayin. These are the gutturals. So now, this is what's interesting. When the definite article is attached to a word that perhaps begins with one of those letters, something has to happen because gutturals, if you remember, cannot be doubled. They can't take a dot. Remember those, those crazy first lessons we did where I said to you that these gutturals can't be doubled? They can't take a dot? So something has to happen. So there's a special terminology that these uh, linguists have developed. It's called compensatory lengthening. <laughs> All right, sounds very technical. So if we were to take the word, for example, and some will pronounce this av or ab, which is simply father, and if you were to add in front of this, Here's your hey. Now I want you to watch what happens. Lengthening had to occur. We went from the pata to the comets to accommodate the fact that this did not double. So this is a definite article. We ha now have the father. So what you're going to see in this lesson is how we begin with the simple if it just is a simple, straightforward word that doesn't have anything complicated, where there's a, a consonant that occurs, we have the hey, we've got the vowel underneath and the dot. But if we're trying to make something definite that begins with these gutturals, something has to happen here to compensate, 
and here's your compensation right here. And if you notice, this letter, Aleph, cannot take a dot in it. So to compensate for this letter not being able to take one of those dots, this here is made into a long vowel. It's strengthened, all right? So what at first appears kind of scary when you begin to say, oh boy, now this is going to get complicated. First, I could understand if everything was a definite article and just looked like this, I would have been plain good. But now you messed everything up because now you're telling me if it takes one of these letters to begin, something must happen underneath. But if you think of it as Aleph, Resh, Ayin, all of those gutturals, just think of it this way. They're in the gutter. They're too weak to take one of those dots, right? You think of it that way, and th then you'll say, that's why we have to have something strong right at the beginning. So there's your compensation. I've given you three types of lengthening that may occur. You can review them at your leisure, but I'll just give you them. They're very straightforward. If your second letter or rather the letter that begins your noun, must something must happen because it cannot accommodate a dot, it cannot accommodate a dagesh ford. There may be lengthening, so it'll always look like this. You'll always go from this pata to kamitz, so it'll either be from this, which was short, to this, which is longer, or it'll be Remember that one dot underneath called hirek? It'll go from hirek to tser. These are the, there's only three lengthenings. Or from kibbutz, or kibbutz to holim, the dot on the top. Now, I give you these because you may start trying to identify and find definite articles. And I want to give you the most information to show you the things you may run into. I wish somebody did this for me. It would have made life so much easier. But right now, the most basic thing you need to remember at this point is look for this. Look for this. Let's change colors for a minute. Look for your hay and the vowel underneath and the dot. That's your beginning point. And if you see the hay beginning in your word and you look right away and see that next to it is one of these gutturals, you know most likely that the beginning hey is a definite article. Look underneath and if you see the comets, you're going to know it's strengthened. That is a definite article. Okay? Now, this gets a little interesting. There are two or three more things I need to tell you regarding the definite article. You're going to hate me for this, so let's get a new page here. New page, and let's save that. All right. Okay, here we go. If you want to have a definite article, or the definite article, the, occurs before these letters, either hey, so notice the difference. For example, if any one of your nouns begin the onset letter or consonant are one of these two. And let me erase this because the example should just be just like that. The definite article will usually be the same. It'll look the same. Now, what's going to be interesting is it's going to double up. We would normally not do that, even in English. So I've given an example here. Um, the word, the Hebrew word for sword, all right, which it's going to look really good in red. I don't know why we're in red, but we're in red. All right. And if I want to make this the sword, I'm simply going to put a hay in front with, so it, it has the same look, except if you notice, there is no dot. There is no dagish fort. All right. So that's one exception. There's not too many more. Um, something that occurs this way is called by the grammarians virtual doubling uh, because you actually have two and it can occur as as hey 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 or so virtual doubling may occur where double double side by side 
and they are pronounced. Uh, the only thing you have to notice here is that there's, there's no dot in the second letter. Now, some of you who've done the grammar and done the lesson are probably saying, wait a minute, if this is the sign, I'm going to trick some of you right now, if this is the sign right here of a definite article and this letter is part of the beget kafat letters, what happens to this dot? You remember we did those letters? Bet, Gimel, Dalid, Kaf, Pe, and T, the last letter, Tav, uh, that all take that dot? Well, let me do a little review here. There are letters that will appear with or without dot. So what happens when, for example, and I'll give you my example because I think I already threw this in somewhere and nobody even probably noticed it, so hee hee. All right, uh, here it is, right here. It was the very beginning one. In fact, it's on page three if you, when you get this. Um, so we did this. I put, I put this in here. It was kind of a sneaky thing. But I put the word in here. Now what's interesting is um, you might ask, what happens to this dot? Because that dot tells us that that is a beget kafat letter, which is a dagish leni. What are we going to do with this dot? What's going to happen with the dot? And the answer is nothing. It'll stay exactly the same. In fact, what I've done here is I've spelled it out for you. The dagish leni has now become a dagish fort. Not, the appearance does not change, and you do not double it, unless the spelling of the word would dictate that. So it just looks the same. So you mean I do nothing with it? That's right. How wonderful. All right. There are a few more exceptions on here that I, I'm just going to leave you to uh, look at them. They're not absolutely got to learn them tonight. They are important. The, probably the most important thing I'm going to plant in your head tonight is recognizing the pattern I've just given you. A lot of what happens when you're learning Hebrew is recognizing patterns of things that you begin to identify Okay, that's a definite article. Okay, that is, and by the way, I would say the definite article, as I've demonstrated, never stands alone. It's always attached to a word. So you don't have to worry about, is it freestanding? In Hebrew, it is not. All right? Now, you're going to see why I was extremely frustrated when I went through the trauma of trying to learn Hebrew. Many of the Hebrew books say, this is the only way a definite article will appear. And they end it there. And if you're reading any of those books, go some many chapters down when they begin to introduce prepositions. And you will be gritting your teeth. Because prepositions uh, are just exactly like definite articles. They are attached to the word. They usually do not. They may sometimes appear independently, but I'll list them for you. I'll show you what they look like. But here is the anomaly. When you attach, um, for example, we'll take a noun. And now all of a sudden, the noun will have a definite article. I'll put DA and a preposition. Suddenly, when you put all this together, noun, uh, definite article, and preposition, something amazing happens in Hebrew. The sign of the definite article, as we see it right here, may very well disappear when the preposition takes over. Now, this is why I'm, I'm, I'm going to go over this I'm going to make sure that you have these instructions because it is what I had encountered in Psalm 91 with the stone. The example there was that the definite article had fallen out. So what you have with the stone is you have a preposition in bet. The definite article was dropped and stone appeared. Now, when I saw it, I immediately saw that is a definite article attached 
disappeared, so I've got a preposition. The definite article is dropped out, but I still see the sign of it under the preposition and the noun. And when I saw that, I, I, I was perplexed at why this had not been picked up in other places. Now, unless you're studying the grammar, you wouldn't see that. And of course, it makes this very, very difficult problem of then how must you interpret the text based on the fact that the definite article alters everything within that verse. So uh, you'll now know why I'm, I'm introducing the definite article tonight. The next step will be the prepositions. And I would also say equally important, as we went through, and we'll do it again, once we've, got, once we've gone through the definite article and preposition, and I begin to introduce nouns, we will go back into our Psalm 91 handouts. Because what I'd like to show you is how tricky it is to navigate if a person is not familiar with what is called the Hebrew construct chain. That is a cluster of nouns that occur side by side, two or more, side by side by side. And in the construct chain, please don't say I lost you, I'll repeat it. In the construct chain, which is noun, 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 if you're looking at this from a bird's eye view, you understand one thing. Hebrew does not possess a word called of or possessive like the Greek genitive does. And the construct helps me to know whether the nouns are definite or, or indefinite. So I walked you through verses 1 and 2 in Psalm 91 and showed a few constructs that flagged the fact that proper names of God where they ended up in the construct made the rest of the structure definite without having a definite article. Now, it sounds complicated, but it's really not. But if you're trying to sort this out in a grammar book, most of the time what happens is you're, you're given noun patterns, told about definite articles, and somewhere down the line you'll be introduced to the construct chains, those noun, 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 and if no one tells you what what this is like, you're going to say, well, well, didn't we already do definite articles? So I'm telling you, there's, there's this pattern to learning that I'd like to try and uh, put in here tonight. It's little, kind of little breadcrumbs being put out to start us just gently into identifying the parts of speech. Once that's done, so we have uh, our definite article, prepositions, and nouns. And we'll get into things like adjectives and the regular parts of speech that we use even in the English language. But once all of those are done and we've done the building blocks, something marvelous happens. Once you've established that you're able to recognize that is a, a feminine noun, that is a plural noun, it has a definite article, it has a preposition, not only are you going in and parsing those words, but something else will begin to identify parts of speech. And that is where you, you and I will probably sit and scratch our heads for a long time wondering, how did they ever come to translate some of these things as they did? Because the parts of speech as they are identified will be so helpful in showing how some of the things as they were translated were not arranged properly, which change the meaning radically. Having said that, um, we will pick up in our next lesson prepositions. I was going to give you prepositions and uh, definite article prepositions and vobs tonight. And I said, no, we'll, we'll just do one step. We've got plenty of time. We'll do a definite article. Uh, you know me, I'd like to just shovel it all off at once and say, here, enjoy. Uh, but we'll do it one step at a time. And this is one where I would highly suggest you, you uh, take the time to look over it as kind of strange as I've shown you that there are some modifications that occur with the definite article. As you get more familiar with identifying, you will say this is not so strange after all. So I just want to put something in perspective. It'll, there it is. It'll be helpful. So not too much uh, complicated stuff. Simply, you're looking for the hey with the vowel underneath. That is the simplest form. And then that is 
if the next letter or the first letter of your noun is a regular consonant with no issues attached. But if this first letter here happens to be weak, we know that the weak letter cannot take a dot. Therefore, what comes under the hay will be strengthened. So those are really the two ones you really need to know absolutely that you will you'll recognize over and over again. And then some of these others that I've mentioned in passing, they are somewhat oddities. There's some exceptions I've included in the handout. For example, what happens if your first letter in your, in your word happens to be a yod with a shua underneath? You'll have to get the handout to figure that out. And uh, I hope you will add it to your notes, build a binder. Please review, because the review in your own time makes these building blocks so much easier when we do these lessons together. So that is your lesson tonight. Get on the telephone. Come to this house.